Hey everybody, Erin Reed here today, and today I'm bringing you 10 fun tropical cards using one kit. It is so fun. There's all kinds of cool stuff on here. Flowers and palm trees, and just look at the cool stuff. It's very tropical feeling, all kinds of cool. They're wild about you. There really is no set theme besides these are all just fun tropical cards, things that you can use using lots of huge pattern papers, what you can do with ribbons, what you can do with embossing powders. There's a ton, a ton, a ton of techniques in this. Don't forget to check down the links below for where you can find all these fun supplies and also check out all my other social media, which is down below for my blog, my Pinterest, my Instagram and things like that. So without further ado, let's get started on making our first card. Okay, moving into card one, we're gonna start off by making a flower. Um, I usually try to make one foofy card per one of these, my 10 cards per one. And then I am going to start by taking some of the gold ribbon. Now, I don't need a big section because, I mean, there's different ways to make these. And it's, it's a rolled ribbon. And the first thing that you need to start off with is you need to have some glue because you're going to be gluing as you go along. So I'm going to be using my super tight all-purpose adhesive. This is a wonderful adhesive. It makes everything kind of stick to itself, which is fantastic. And it's not toxic. It's just, it's a great glue. And I have my little glue jar here that I can hold upside down. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm starting off by taking and I kind of glue two sections together and then I twist just to kind of get the beginning going. And then I'm going to kind of fold it in on itself. Now that part's going to cover over top of that. So I'm not too worried about it. And then I'm just going to start folding and folding it under, folding it under just like this. And now I've gotten a little further along. I got to add a little more glue just right here to the bottom. I've seen people do this with hot glue, but man, I burn the crap out of my hands doing that. Keep folding. Now is when you start making your folds a little bit bigger. So it looks very kind of geometric at this point. Folding, add a little more glue. Fold under. At this point, it looks like a hot mess because you can't really see what's happening, but you're starting to build the flower. I need to add more glue right here. So you're just adding layers, folding layers over top of each other, making each fold a little bit larger. And the next thing you have is you have a beautiful flower. So keep rolling. See, there's nothing to stick to. So as you keep rolling it in, you're losing the sticky because you've covered it with a clean piece of the ribbon. And I like starting with a very large piece of ribbon so I don't shortchange myself in the length of my flower. And here you can start from the beginning of it now. It takes about a good 10 folds for it to really kind of take into effect. I might end up using this entire thing of ribbon, which is fine. Make one beautiful flower. I don't mind. There we go. Here we're starting to come together. Oh, need more glue. You know when it starts kind of unraveling on you, that's when you need glue. But you definitely need a good tacky glue for this. You just want to make sure it doesn't stick to your fingers instead, like it just did to me. Nice that they got lots of lot, good length of ribbon on this. You can't do this with a super skinny ribbon, and this actually works a little bit better if you have a thicker ribbon, but this is just fine. So here we go. See, so we're starting to get that flower. Gotta add more glue and now at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I fill in my gaps I think I have the size of the flower that I want so I'm going to fill in all my gaps meaning I'm not going to make my loops any bigger but I have a gap here you know I have a gap right here and make sure that it's all filled in there's kind of a gap right here I mean it's kind of already forming the gaps but I'm not making the flower any larger I'm just making sure that everything is kind of filled in it doesn't look like here's one here I need more glue. <laughs> I think I will use this entire ribbon. My finger's getting a little sticky because I keep putting it on there so the ribbon wants to stick to my finger and not to itself. Just got to be careful about that. And I'm just going to go ahead and use up the rest of the ribbon. Keep folding it under, not making my loops any bigger. Again, just adding more depth to my flower. At this point, I'm going to take just a little section of the box, the Love from Lizzie box, which is fantastic, and I'm going to add a little bit of some cardstock or the cardboard from the box to the bottom of the flower. 
right here. And this little corner is a little too big. So this is a nice thing about just using the cardboard. So you can kind of rip off what you want. And it's almost dry, but not quite. And now is when you can kind of come in and fluff up your flower. And do your thing. And make sure all the levels are where you want them to be. I've got one little end that's not a loop, and I don't want to see that. So I'm going to tuck it under my cardboard here. And just make sure now you can kind of come in and adjust some of your loops. You know, nothing is really set yet, so you can still kind of adjust and tweak and manipulate a little bit of your flower. The cool thing about a flower is that there's no perfect way of doing it. Flowers are imperfect, which is fantastic. So this is what I would call the loopy flower. It's like the twisted loopy flower. It's really, really fun to do. All right, now that our flower is done, I'm going to take this little bitty flower here and I'm going to leave it wood. I'm not going to actually do anything to it. I love just the contra contrast of the, the plain wood element. The first thing that I'm going to do though is I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to snip out the center. You have to start with the center, but it makes it too bulky to add another center to uh, on top of it. So I'm just going to trim that out. And you have to wait for it to kind of dry a little bit. So I gave it about five minutes of just kind of setting. So I got rid of kind of the nub in the middle. You can't start the flower without it, but you can always remove it after. At this point, I'm just kind of tweaking my flower, making sure all my little leaves and petals are kind of where I want. I don't have any sticking out in a funny way. I'm enjoying the way the flower is. It's not 100% dry, 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 so I have some room to groove. And I'm liking it. And the more I'm doing it, I'm kind of flattening it out. So it's not a big puffy flower, it's more of a flat flower. And then I'm just going to take this little wooden piece and pop it right here in the center. Just giving it that good center. And then just kind of fluffing up around it, giving the little layers kind of somewhere to go. Kind of foofing it up, I guess, is the best way to describe. And that is our little DIY flower that's going to go on our first card. All right, I've kind of started building the card, and I'm going to use this little piece of like green thread for lack of a better term and then I also grabbed the tags this is the tag that came from within the card and I'm going to ink it and I pulled out this uh, resist chalk edger old road and it's basically like a really dark it's got this like this dark kind of a grayish tone and I'm going to use that as the base for this card I'm inking the edges of everything with this card um, the color scheme I see with this is more of like the, the dark greens this is my shabby sheet card. <laughs> um, a little bit of some brown in here. So I'm going to have some fun with that. Now, just as a heads up, I've had this happen to these little inkers. These little inky things like to fall off. And the super tight glue is perfect for setting them back in there. So I'm going to let this sit out and air dry while I'm doing it. And I'm going to take my, oops, I forgot just this piece right here. I'm going to ink this up. I really didn't need to, but I just want to get rid of those white lines on there that there and then I'm going to go ahead and secure this piece using my Xyron tape runner to my card right here just like that not too far over and I just want to check it with this and yes I'm good with that now I did take off on the tag the little burlap piece but we're going to be using that here shortly we're going to get the flower the centerpiece so that's where we're going to go with that but in our kit we got these fun stencils and I did not center that on there very well. So on the stencil, we have these cool pieces. So I'm gonna take this ink and I'm just gonna pounce it, giving it some kind of like a background. So there's one piece, I'm gonna have another one kind of coming up this way. It's just a little hint of something. I'm gonna have another one come over here. And you don't have to have them fully be actually on the card. The fact that it's kind of coming off the card, you know, just a hint of it. And even if they get covered up, oops, see, look, it's wiggling around on me. Screw that up. So okay, I make this one a little more obvious. Should wait for it to dry, but I'm being impatient. <laughs> you know, and then I think I want a little one kind of coming over here. This is why I put a white piece of paper on my background so I can make a mess and I can always get rid of the paper. I want just a piece right here. You can decide how much or little you want to add of your stencils. It's just adding something. Just a little corner piece. And I think I just want a little hint up here in the corner as well. There we go. And there we go. It's kind of adding a background to this background of the card. 
Okay, so now I have my white piece right here. And I think I'm also going to really distress ink, really add some streaky lines, really grunge this up. Like I'm trying to make this my own background paper. So it's such a light ink that I can kind of get away with it. There we go. Really just get in there and grunge it up. The thing is still wiggling around. I'm not giving it time to dry. Get my finger kind of blended up a little bit. Really muck it up a little bit. If you really want to go full force, you could add like water to this, but I don't want to go that far. Okay, now I have like this nice, almost pristine, but not quite tag. I think I'm going to muck this thing up a little bit more as well. Not, I don't want to give it too much for a design. I definitely want to kind of grunge it up a bit more. There it is. See that? Look at that. That's pretty cool, right? And then I have my flower. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my twine right here, and I'm going to make it look like it's a loop, just like this. And I'm going to go ahead, actually, I'm going to glue this down. I'm going to use the glue for this because I don't want to take away um, the entire, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be stuck to this tack, and I don't want to lose the ability for it to stick down really well. So now I'm going to loop these up. It's kind of fun that we get the little bonus piece of this extra burlap, and I'm going to put it down on an angle just to give it somewhere to go, just to begin with. Need a little more glue. It didn't have enough to stick to. There we go. Plenty of glue there now. So there is that. Stick, stick. <laughs> and then I'm going to take this, which is this green thread, and I'm just going to loop it all up, make it look like a big giant mess, and then just kind of plop it down here. Hit that center, have it kind of, it's going to go everywhere. You're just kind of stuffing it in. Some people staple it in. I just kind of stuff it under whatever it is. And I can still, because it's wet glue, I can still kind of pull but you need to have portions of it sticking to your glue, otherwise it's gonna just fall off your card. Fortunately, everything's sticking to my fingers because my fingers are sticky. And then you're gonna put down your flower. And if you feel like there's an end, you can kind of come in and there, it is. and there is that. Now, I had this idea of putting these pieces in here and I kind of like them. I kind of like the fact that they're just kind of coming off a little something up there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those in place. And I am off centering them. So I've got one coming higher than the other. Let's separate them out a little bit more. And then there's some small stamps on this stamp, like all these little sentiments. So I'm actually going to pull out one of my small stamp blocks. And using the same ink, really ink it up well. I'm going to check to see how well this inks. It might be too faint. No, it's good. And the sentiment's pretty cute. I'll always believe in you. Isn't that cute? I love that. I'll always believe in you. Too adorable. I'm going to come in right here. And there is always belief in you. And now we're going to come in with some of these gorgeous and I'm going to use the gold everything on this is gold all right I'm pulling out this brand new one and I love it because it's got this little top thing that says it's kids safe so if my daughter grabs it I'm not worried about it. this is also from super tight I think it's fun plastic so we're gonna play with this see how it works for the sequins so it's got oh, it's got a pretty nice small tip so I'm just gonna place a few little dots of glue oh and I can place them nice and small which is good two I'm gonna put one here I've got another one of these like pick up sticker kind of doodads about picking up sequins. There we go. Come on, let go. Sometimes the sticker, the little sticky thing, wants to stick more <laughs> to the sequin and it doesn't want to let it go to the glue. That. I don't want to add anything down here. I don't want to take away. And there is our first card. All right, so let's move on to card number two. 
I have taken the uh, yellow card stock and cut it down to be a vertical size A2 size card. And then one of the pretty background papers you can see here, it's got all the fronds and stuff on it. And I'm going to take the stencil and we are going to do just a little something in the corner, nothing much, just a little tiny something. So I'm going to take the dark green here, which is that old road. It's not really a green anymore. And we are going to pounce and create texture with the fronds. I'm in love with these little fronds here. They're so cool. Over here, do the same thing. There we go. And I'm at a little boo-boo there. I am gonna ink this and kind of get it all mucky looking, as I usually do. Just add a little something in the background there. And I think I'm also going to stamp. And this time I'm gonna stamp using something similar we're going to do a very, very light, super light background with the same frond. And I'm just using my little stamp block for this. And I'm just going to come in and add another layer of dimension just kind of up here in the corner. This time I'm going to pull out a brown. So I don't want to use the same color that I've already done. And I'm going to do like a stamp and then come in here and then like background it. Just so you get kind of a, just what is that in the background? You know, nothing major. So this is what you call a second generation stamp. So stamp and then kind of come in. Just creating some layers here, lots of fun layers. And you know, things work better in five. So let's do another one, come in. This is why I love having that little background paper here. And then have another one come down. Just light, just something. Okay, move that off here. Now we're going to add some fun strip layers. I want to use the larger strips that are on here. I love that she always includes these strips. It always gives me an idea of where I want to go. And we're going to do just a little strip just right along here. And I'm actually just going to go ahead. We're going to do two strips. Whoops. I want to get this on here. One right here. Put it down. And then I'm going to grab a second one. Same width. They're on the strips. You get a ton of different widths, but I want to keep the same width going. I don't want to be sticking it to my background paper versus the paper I want to stick it to. But I'm trying to get them nice and straight. There we go. And these ones are super shiny. Some of the puns we've had in the past have been like glittery. And these ones are just like metallic strips. They're really pretty. I mean, you can just see that pop and shine. So I have a little butterfly punch and I'm pulling out one of the other sheets of cardstock and it's just this beautiful, you know, gold glittery, just adding that little bit of glitter, a little bit of shine. And it's just a simple little butterfly that we're going to kind of pop up and just rest right there in that corner. So I'm going to take my super tight adhesive and it's got a fine tip applicator on one end and I'm just going to come in and rest a little bit of glue right there in the center. And just let it kind of go boop right there. That's it. Now, some of these sentiments are great. So I think we're going to do Wild About You. And this time I'm going to come in with a black ink because I really want it to stand out. So I've got Wild About You. I want to make sure I'm doing it the right way. Just test my ink here real fast. Yeah, see, and that pops really nicely. And I think I'm just going to go... Well, let me see. Do I want it here? No, I, I'm trying to see if I want to fit it in the corner, but I like the feel of the corner the way it is. So I think I'm just going to do the wild about you down here. Stamp it, ink it up again. Flip it over. And just leave it just like that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of some sequin action going on. I'm going to get my tray out because I know I'm going to be using my sequins a bunch. So this is my little sequin tray that I use, and it's got a few that I just refuse to kind of, they get stuck inside there. But it makes life easier versus digging in the bag, and I should have done the first card, but I was like, no, I don't know how many I'm going to use. Yeah, I'm stupid. I'm going to use them. So I've got my little quick stick. There's a few different versions of these out there, and I've got a couple of them. And whatever one happens to be sitting near me is what I grab. And I'm just going to add a couple of little gems. I'm going to put a little glue just a little dabs of glue, one here, just one here. Just kind of add, I'm just going to do five. 
and see how that looks. And I'm going to do a mixture between the big and the small. And you know, when this rests on the card, you kind of look to see where I want it, where I want it with this. I think I'm going to pop in a little more of that green, just because it's pulling in that color of the green from behind. So we're going to add in the green. So right now I don't have a whole lot of green action happening on the card. No, I'm going to do all small. The big one looks too funny. So small. And whenever I put my sequins on, I always do them so that, like they're cup side up. I like it better. I think it looks better. Now you obviously could change up the colors of the sequins here. You don't have to do all one color, but I haven't added a whole lot of other colors and there's already a lot of gold on this front of this card. So that's why I was sticking with this. So there it is. I'm just going to glue all these down. So I don't want to mess up my top layer. So I'm just going to start from my bottom layer. This one I can flip upside down. Not a problem. But I'm going to ink this too and I inked it in that darker color. And just to be consistent, just so it's got getting rid of that white edge that's on there. And then flip over, add my adhesive to that, stick this down. And you know, I don't know if there's a right or wrong way for this. I think it goes this way. Looking at the leaves, the patterns make more sense this direction. Now, I don't want to flip this over and mess with this because I did all my work on here first. So I'm just going to add adhesive. I'm getting close to the end of this. I'm just adding my adhesive here and then sticking this down. Just so I don't uh, mess up what I did on my card. And there's card number two. Moving on to card number three, we're going to do something kind of cute and fun. We've got a white ground paper, white background paper, I can't talk today, folded in half. And then I have this leaf paper, which I think is so pretty. It's just it's all these progressive leaves. And I have this little section of white. But we're going to add the ribbon to this. It's actually two-sided, but the, the stripes were too much with the background, but the solid worked really well. And there's so many colors of green, it just it functions perfectly. So magic tape to the rescue this is so super fancy let me tell you <laughs> and i'm not inking this one you know shocker i am not going to ink on this card i'm leaving it nice and clean just what you call clean and simple cas <laughs> just leaving it nice and easy and simple all right so now ah oh, i did it i did it backwards sugar there we go. So I'm just butting this right up against the top here. And this is going to rest right along here and give this nice pretty border. Just a cute little border that's going along right there. I was trying to decide if I want to go all the way down, but I think that just looks funny. So we're just going to have it so that way you can also see more of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. And center it right in the middle. Make sure your leaves are going the right direction and they're not upside down. So that would just look weird. And then go ahead and stick my adhesive down on here. And I have an idea, let's see if it pans out. Again, dealing with the lovely strips that we get in our kit. And I was gonna do, again, the really fat ones. I'm into the fat ones right now. Or the thick ones, the wider ones, whatever you wanna call it. And I am just going to lay one here. I just love that little border. I wanna make sure it gets right along that edge there. So pretty. And I'm going to come in with some really fine tip scissors to snip off the end. Now, in the past, I have saved some of these little strips, but I have never, ever used an entire set of uh, these strip stickers. So I'm not going to be too persnickety about trying to keep them. I'm also going to line the card using the same long strips right along the edge here. My concern is, is that it's got lots of layers and it may not work, but we're going to try. So line it along there. I was afraid it's just going to wiggle around too much. So we'll see. Come in. I think I'm going to have to add, and I'm probably right off camera here. I'm just trimming this up. I think I'm going to have to add a tiny bit of glue because yeah, this is popping up just along here. Just I'm adding a bead of glue, which I should get some glue. I know I taped it in the back, but it's popping up and I don't want it to do that. So I'm just adding a bead of glue right here. 
I'm also going to add a little bit of glue here because I didn't get adhesive and it's pulling up right where the ribbon is. There's nothing sticking it down because I didn't get the tape runner on top of the ribbon. There we go. Now everything should stick beautifully. Look how pretty that is already. Isn't that gorgeous? I want to see if I can do one more. Yeah, I like that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's just, it's encapsulating that ribbon and just making it pop. I really want to make sure that these strips look even and then just trim up the edges like before. Just like that. And look how pretty that is. Okay, now we're going to come up with a little something that we're going to put as our focal point because we've created a beautiful background here. Okay, so we got the cutest little die, which is this little toucan. And I've already die cut it out in white, but I really want to do the base of the body in black. I was just kind of testing it. But I want to keep all of these little pieces here because toucans are kind of white and black and then have colorful beaks. So I'm going to keep all this stuff. I'm just going to move it off to the side because we're going to insert it back into the die that we're going to cut in black. Now, I, there is no black in this kit, but this is an older black one from a previous kit. It's kind of a glossy, almost like a chalkboard paper, but I just really want a black. So I'm going to pop all the little pieces out. I'm going to actually glue and fussy cut, and this is going to be very meticulous, but that's okay. Actually, I think I can get away with just gluing this to here and fussy cutting this out as best as I possibly can. I think I'm going to go with that. Some of these pieces I don't have to worry about. So we're going to do that. I'm going to kind of, we're going to wing it. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to come in here and get the big pieces. Just get the big areas, kind of get the tail. The tail I'm going to have to fussy cut out, but I think it's easier to lay this over top and to just do a rough fuss cut versus trying to um, stick this, I don't know, it's just, it's not going to work any other way. You'll see where I'm going with it. Okay, so stick this on here. There we go. Now get my good scissors, my fussy cut scissors. And I don't need to be super meticulous because I can kind of go under a little bit. But I don't want to get to the point where you're going to see that I messed up and I was under changing. Now I am going to color the beak. That is one thing I am going to do. So this is what I mean by I can go a little bit less. So since this is already black, I can kind of fudge it underneath the head here. And I can go undercut, so I don't have to be super exact. Same around the feet. I'm not going to try and fussy cut these feet. I'm going to go all the way to here. So see what I mean? I just cut to here because you're never going to know. You're just seeing that white background. Now around the tail, I don't really have much of a choice. I do have to kind of get in here. So see what I mean? It doesn't, you don't even realize because I'm doing such a close job of cutting into it that, you know, I'm kind of going under the black versus just next to the black. And same with the belly here. I can just cut in really close here. It's where it gets thin around the neck that um, I have to kind of be careful I don't overcut that because then you're going to notice. I obviously don't want to cut into the black of the bird because then I'm cutting part of my die out and I don't want to do that either. So it's just being a little meticulous. But I think this is the easiest way to give you that look. So there's that. Okay, so there is our toucan, which I love. It's got the white pieces. But I want to emphasize this beak color. So here is the beak. I want to get a good feel. No, I'm going to do the fire. And this is, again, why I have my scratch paper. So that's a good orange. I like that. And I don't have any orange or yellow on my paper. There we go. So I said top and yellow. So we're just going to color that in. And the bottom and orange. There we go. Oops, missed one little tiny spot. There we go. And you want to color it before you actually put it in. You don't want to do it beforehand. Now I'm going to take some of my glue. And I don't want to overdo my glue here. Because I want it to still sit nicely. And then just place this in here. It's back to that old-fashioned paper piecing. And there it is, our little toucan. I love it. 
So now I have, I can get rid of all these little pieces. See, isn't that easier just laying it over white? I was going to do it white anyway. Now, if you were going to do a different color, if you want to have like gold in the background, that would look really pretty too. There's so many ways you could do that. You just stick it over and then just fussy cut. And then you can just, let's like, say you want to accentuate like his wing or parts of his tail feathers. You could color those in or you could die cut those out in a color, in a, that color, but I think coloring them because they're so small, they'll save a little bit of paper. All right, this little guy is going to stick right on here. So I'm just going to come in. I'm actually going to place the glue on the ribbon area because it's the only spot that he's really going to be sticking to. All right, that little head is free floating in there and I want to give it a little more stability. So I'm just going to test. This is just some of the cardboard. I don't want to make it too. There we go. That's the perfect size. So I'm just going to pull his little head back, add some glue right here. Stick it down, add some glue on top. And I'm doing this as a glue method versus using my, like a Xyron and turning this into like a sticker because I want to make sure I get it right in the right spot. And I am good. I think I need a little piece for the tail and I have a tiny, tiny little piece right here just so it doesn't go running around. I'm flying stuff going around my desk. <laughs> it's gonna happen. All right, so I want to make sure I don't see it. There we go. So it's got to hide just perfectly under that tail. So that way it doesn't warp and bend. It's got something to stick to. So there's that. And then my trick that I'm going to do when this is all said and done is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to take something big and kind of push it down so that way it doesn't warp up on me. But we're going to add a little sentiment. There's the cutest little sentiment. Sorry you're leafing. <laughs> I love it. I just think it's the best. And we did all the leaves, so... It's the perfect sentiment, and I'm going to do this in black. I'm going to test it on my little background paper here first, make sure I'm good. Yep. And, whoop. Okay, so as I was going into stamp, I messed up. And instead of just fudging it over and pretending that it never happened, I'm going to show you how to fix this because how many of you have ever had this? You get to the point where your card is like done, you're ready to put the stamp on the downfall to stamping in my mind. I love stamps, but I screw them up more often than not. And what I did is I had the stamp, it fell out of my hand and I got this on there. And I don't want that look, which is why I tend to go to a lot of shabby chic stuff because normally I'd be like, ah, screw it, go with it. But this is a very clean card and I want it to look clean and pretty. So I've recut out a section of white paper Good thing it was white and I have a ton of white. I mean, that's that's the one positive thing here. I've pulled off the strip here and I've lifted up the bottom of the tail and I pulled off that little piece of cardboard that I stuck on there. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stick this right over top of here. You wouldn't even know. And then we're gonna re-put on that last strip. So at least I did it on a section that wasn't the leaves because that would be hard to fix. It was just the white, but it, it is fixable. Um, I'm just gonna stick my glue on here because I have it with me. It's just right here and then and that way I can also wiggle it around if I did a tape runner which you could easily do this with tape runner I, I wouldn't be able to make sure that I have this exactly where I want it so there I did a pretty good job the first time around and then reapply from the edge my strip of gold and then now put back down my little Tucron's tail what do you guys say? Toucan? Toucan? What's your toucan? Maybe it's like a potato potato thing. I don't know. I'm going to stick my little tail down. How many of you guys have screwed up cards to the point where you're like, crap! <laughs> At least that was an easy fix. Look, you wouldn't even know. You don't even know that it happened. Fake out. <laughs> now, don't screw up my stamp. And what I was doing is I was trying to decide where I wanted to stamp. So do I want to do down here? I think I like it right in here, right next to the bird. So oh, don't drop it. And I'm just doing it in black. Sorry, you're leafing. Cute, right? Now I'm done. It would have been done 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Here's the next card done. All right, here we go, card number four. Okay, I've pulled out a series of flowers, of punches that I have, and we are gonna create a flower using this beautiful paper. Now, this has got a chevron on one side, but it's got kind of this green color on the other. And we're also gonna pair it up with this beautiful gold. So we're gonna create our own flower. I'm going to punch, and this really works with any of the flower punches that you may have. Whatever, 
you happen to have. I'm going to punch one little starburst out of the gold. It's just going to be a little hint of something kind of resting inside my flower. And then I'm going to do two of each of the flowers, two large. So I've done two large, and now I'm going to come in and do my two smaller ones. And I'm definitely sticking to one side of my uh, paper because look how much I still have left. So for one flower, this is all you need, and all I'm going to make is one flower. And the first step you're going to do is you need a little bit of water. So I'm actually going to take off my white and just use my black craft mat because I don't want to get my paper wet. And I'm going to start off by spraying, and I have to dry off my mat here table in a minute. So I'm spraying them down. The cool thing about paper is that it has this really kind of a neat effect when you get it wet. It does something really cool. All I'm doing here, and I'm going to come up close, is pinching. That's it. So I'm coming through and I'm pinching the edges and I'm having the pattern shape upward of the one flower. If I feel like my flower's gotten a little too wet, I'm going to flip it and I'm going to have the other color face upwards. Same thing, pinching. So it doesn't matter if you have a five petal flower, it doesn't matter if rounded, they're points, if they already have a shape, whatever, if you've got dies, if you've got punches, this works for all of them. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep on squishing these up just like this. Flip this over. So I want to have one pattern, which is that greeny pattern, and one um, of the more green per flower, just like that come in here and I didn't oversaturate these. Now here's the reason why you get the paper wet. One, it's going to help it hold its shape better. So you don't have to worry about trying to, it's not going to flatten out as fast, which is kind of cool. When you get paper wet, you're stretching out the fibers and you're moving, you know, your pieces into whatever shape. If you've got some of those paper shaper, those things, um, you know, like the little ball things like from McGill and stuff that works too, but I just find getting it wet and using my hands works great. Okay. The next step we're going to do, is we're going to do our layers. Now, don't forget about the little piece that you punched out already. I love this little starburst. It just adds, just adds something cool to it. We're going to start out by adding a little bit of glue here, and then we're going to come in and add our next layer. Now, it does not matter which one you want to add on the top and the bottom, but when you add the layers together, you offset them. So if you notice the flower pieces, I've got the petals off center from each other. Now we're going to add our starburst. It's that little hint of something gold in the background there. And I didn't bother messing with that because it's already, it's so tiny and thin. There's no need. These ones, uh, I'm going to keep the same pattern. I put the pattern one on top and I'm going to do, I'm going to make this and nest this into each other. So this is a nesting flower. It's just a pinched nested flower. It's very, very simple to do. Works with any flower shapes that you happen to have. It's one of my favorite little flower techniques to do. So easy. So, so easy. And then take this, and then you can take like the back of a pencil, or this little thing, and see how it just kind of pops in there with that little bit of gold? It's just easy. Super easy, super fun. I think I'm going to call this my flower kit because we weren't given any, well, except for the wooden flowers. We weren't giving much for flowers. And then just to, you know, finish it off, you could go with a smaller flower punch, but I'm going to pop in a sequin, and that's going to be my center. Just making life easy. So I'm just a little dab of glue. It's right there. And then just pop this in the center. And I'm going to double it up. I'm going to do a big one. And then I am going to do, whoops, that went flying. I'm going to do a small, there's these black ones in there. And I'm going to add that black one on top. Just for something different. A little dab will do you on that one pop in with this little black guy just to give kind of a different kind of a center. So it's not just a single sequin, it's a layered sequin scenario going on there. Now we're going to get into our glitter. So I'm just grabbing a little brush and this glitter stuff is so cool. Now when I first got my glitter it was stuck shut. I think it was because of the shipping and a little bit because this is like a glitter paste basically. So what you want to do is I ran it over some warm water if your little glitter is having a hard time opening and it opened right up, no problem. So I'm going to come in here now and I'm just going to paint the edges. Just come in here, paint some of the edges. It does not need to be exact. Just come in, hit those little edges. Don't worry about if it looks messy. This is not supposed to be like a perfect looking flower here. 
you're just kind of hitting little sections, adding some fun glitter. No right, no wrong to this. Just sprucing it up. You feel like your little V's or your little pinched pieces are starting to come a little loose, then pinch them close again. You're not as little or as much as the glitter as you want. That's the fun part. It's up to you. Make sure you close this when you're done with it because you don't want to waste it and it will dry out. Now I do need to go wash this pretty quickly. But the next step I want to do before is I want to come in while well, this is still kind of wet. I should have done it before I did all the glitter, but it's okay. And I want to kind of pinch. I don't want it to be super flat. I want this flower to have a little dimension. I want it to kind of stick up and be spiky looking. And as the water dries, it's going to maintain this fun shape. There we go. That looks cool. I like that. See? So all I had to do was just kind of lift it up. It's also getting the 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 glitter or the glitter, green glitter, glue, whatever you want to call this, this stuff is going to also help it kind of maintain that texture shape. So because pieces are going to help stick to each other. And there is our beautiful flower. Almost looks kind of like a little lily pad kind of thing. All right, I'm going to go wash my brush and I'm going to show you what to do next. Okay, so that's not completely dry, but it's pretty darn close. Next step is, is we're going to create these fun layers. And this is just a very, very simple card. Get my, I cut off a piece of this beautiful um, butterfly paper. I just love those little butterflies. And I trimmed it a little bit short. So layer that here. And it doesn't go all the way from top to bottom. And we're going to kind of off-center it, kind of closer to the edge. Still seeing a bit of this. And I put this on the gray cardstock. In the kit, there's just a little bit of gray cardstock. I'm now going to come in and we're going to do the not the largest ones, but there's the mid-range ones. We're going to grab two of them. Just set one off to the side. You're going to do one right on the edge and go all the way top to bottom. Again, make sure it sticks to the paper, not to your fingers when you pull it off. And for this one, I am going to go ahead and like layer it on the inside. Just a little interest on the front inside. Mostly because I'm two reasons. One, it's kind of cool to look on the inside and you see this little sticker running through. Two, I'm lazy and don't feel like cutting it off. <laughs> Take your pick which one you want to go with. <laughs> Next one, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do it and I'm going to give it just a little bit of a, like a double layer. Oops, but make it straight because it always looks stupid. Make it straight. There we go. Just like that. And then again, I'm going to flip it over and just tape it on the inside. Because I am lazy. But again, it looks kind of cool. If this bugs you, obviously cut it. The other option is, is you can get one more strip and finish the line. So it looks like an interest on the inside very simple. So look how cool that is. Very clean and simple. Nice big pop of this beautiful color. And then we're going to add our little flower up here at the top. Just like that. Just super clean, simple. No must, no fuss on this card. We're not doing anything super fancy with it. Add a nice big blob of glue. Just like that. And just let it dry. There's just a little stamp on here that says for you. And I'm going to come in with that dark, or that one here it is, on that dark gray color. It's because I'm dealing with lots of grays in here because there's a gray paper. And I don't want it to stand out and be super, you know, like in your face. They call it Old Road. And where am I going to put this? I'm actually going to lift this up because I don't want to get in the way. And I'm just going to put the For You right there and then put the flower there and then done. That's it. Now, if a three-dimensional flower bothers you, you could easily make this a super flat flower. I just like the idea that everything else is so clean, and then there's this hint of this cool flower that's kind of popped out of there, and it really just makes it all that different. I mean, kind of this is what you call like those white space or negative space kinds of designs. This is where it's going for. So there it is. Next card done. Checking along, we're on card number five. Okay, so you kind of get the idea from my layout right now. So we're going to keep going with that. We have the red cardstock base, and we I pulled out the two-con paper. I just thought it was so pretty. So one of the ways that you can use 
if you've noticed, which I'm trying to use all this beautiful pattern paper without destroying it for the most part, is either make it nice and big and then put a big graphic on top of it, use a little tiny strip and then keep it plain, or use a whole bunch and then layer very simple things on top of it and not overcomplicate it. Otherwise, the whole card just looks busy and like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So it's, it's one way of doing these big graphics without making it look like your card's a giant mess ball. So, especially if you add it with like the extra black border around there with the ink that I just did on the red, it kind of makes it pop with the red that's on there. I'm also gonna ink my little strips here because they're gonna help them pop against that paper and just, it, it works. And I'm back to my inking again. <laughs> I like the look of the black on this one versus that very light light brown color that I had been using or that old road or whatever it is. It just works. There we go. Now for this, because I don't want to try and get into these, I am going to turn these into stickers. So I'm getting out my trusty little sticker maker from Zyron. Pop these little guys in here. I always do them one at a time. So I start with one and then I come in with my next one. There we go. And then I go with my last one. If you want to try and put them all in at the same time, oops, I put that in so angled, it's not going to have sticky. So I'm going to have to add, see, I didn't put it in straight and it went off in its own direction. Oh, well. Okay, so first one, and I'm trying to decide, do I, I think I'm going to leave these all, because there's so much going on. At first, when I had this down, I'm going to move this down. I had these all going in like opposite directions. They weren't lined up. But I think I'm gonna line these up evenly. I think it's gonna look better. And then my unevenness and all the fun is coming from the background paper and these beautiful little flowers. These look flowers that we got in the kit. So don't overcomplicate things is the bottom line. So there we go. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my glue, little dab of glue pop the first one down and it's one per strip. I made the strips three fourths of an inch just in case you're wanting to ever replicate this card. There we go. And for the mat, I just, you know, usually an A2 size card is five and a half by four and a quarter. So this mat with the two con paper is four inches by five and a quarter. So I just go down by a quarter inch both ways. Sorry if you do it by centimeters. Do the exchange on that one. <laughs> my my measurements. This is only in inches, so I can't tell you. So I've had to figure out a way to do everything in inch base. Okay, so one thing I like about doing the wet glue on this is that it gives me room to kind of wiggle it around, which I'm good with. I found a stamp and it says "Wild About You," so I'm just going to stamp that right there in the black. And then we're going to add, don't drop it this time, like I did on that previous card. Oops, I'm going to have to lift this sky up real fast because otherwise I can't get my stamp block in there. There, there's that. Okay, if I was in my Misty, I would restamp that, but I didn't push hard enough and I'm never going to get that lined up again. So, moot point, it's going to be a nice faded stamp. It's all good. All right, so then we're going to come in and we're going to add a few more of the fun sequins. I kind of want to lay them out first to see where they're going to go. We have these fun dark ones. I think I'm going to play with the darker colors that are in this set. There's a light green and there's some really dark green ones. And that's the ones I'm playing with right now. There we go. Okay, so I just kind of placed a few sequins. I wanted to see if I liked the concept of it first, and I do. Um, I went with the gold and the dark, dark green that's in there, and I used the big and the small ones as I completely drop my glue again. I'm having a hard time with that. So I'm just gonna come in with my little glue stick and then stick it down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick all these down. And that's it, card number five is done. Hi, right, it starts to hard number six. Okay, so I pulled out this beautiful dark green color. I just love this dark green color. And we're gonna pair it up with this gorgeous what is it? It's just dot paper. And again, we're going to keep this a very clean and simple card. Go ahead and put my adhesive on here. 
stick it right here in the center. I'm a matting queen. I love layers. I love adding lots of dimension. Okay, then we have this beautiful punchella, and I it's this is what you get the sequins from. So if you notice, like the little sequin pieces, they would pop right out of this. And so instead of throwing away this piece, they'll sell it, which I think is kind of smart because it's really kind of fun. And I love the dots on the dots. Just think it's kind of a neat idea. So I'm going to take my glue stick and this time I'm going to flip it around and I'm not going to be able to get enough of the tape runner on here. And I'm going to stick this tag over top at an angle, just like this just like you see there right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this tag on there, but I need to, I have a little sequin stuck to my finger. I'm only going to add the glue to the punchella that would be underneath the tag. So I'm just doing the center here. So this is like a little brush nib that I can come in and kind of apply a bunch here. And I'm not worried about the fact that the, there's going to be some sections that aren't going to get covered because again, I was only applying the glue where the tag is going to be. So wherever there isn't room, tag is going to pick up that extra so I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to move that off to the side while I work on my tag now. So here I have my tag. I pulled off the little jute string that was on there and we're just going to do this as a little bow at the top there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stamp with this linear stamp along this tag. I just think it's cute. Almost all the other stamps I can actually get away with my cute little circle stamp block. I love that thing. But this one's just a little bit too long to work with that. Okay, so here I have that. I am gonna go with the black. I really want this to kind of pop. So I'm just hitting the black, stamping it up, inking it up, not stamping, I haven't stamped anything yet. Get it all on here, nice good thick coat. And I'm gonna run it along the edge. So just right along the edge here. Just right along there. That's it. And of course, wants to stick, and there it is. Just nice, fun little dimension going on there. And then I'm going to switch it out and put my little stamp sentiment that says, "I'll always believe in you." Put this guy back. I'm loving these little sentiments that are on here. I feel like they just kind of work. They're easy to tuck them in here and there. Ink this up in black as well. And I'm just going to come in right here. And I went way too hard, but that's okay. Last time I didn't stamp hard enough. The other time I stamped too hard. I did a really good job on all these ones, but that's okay. I just went a little too hard. I'm not going to worry about it. So I think I'm going to use it as kind of like this dividing line between the stamps that I just stuck on there and then the sentiment. So it's just right there, just like that. So I'm going to cut it a little bit longer get between two of the sequins that are in there and then snip it. And they're stitched in there so that you don't have to worry about them all cascading off like, you know, pearls or something. And then we're going to use, actually, you know what? We're just going to trim this to be exactly on there. So I'm going to get my glue. I'm going to add my bead of glue and go all the way down the length here. One rogue. Hey, look, any sequins that pop out, I'm trying to move my sequin thing. Now I'm going to come in with my fine tip scissors and come in and get in to right where I feel is that edge split. So one thing I've noticed about card making, especially when you do like clean and simple cards, is that attention to that little bit of detail, those tiny little things that you normally would go, eh, that doesn't matter. Well, it really does matter in the grand scheme of things to make your card look good for this for these types of cards. Okay, so I don't think, yeah, my glue is kind of dried up a little bit. So I'm just going to come in a little bit more. I waited too long. I should have done the punch out later on. I should have done the tag stuff first and then come in. But that's okay. And then just stick this down. My hand's got a little bit of black on it, but that's okay. And then come in right here, big old blob of glue right here in the center. Keep putting my cap on and then add my little tie. And then that's it. Super simple. Done. This card is a whole lot of layering. If you notice, I've got a dark green mat and then I've pulled out this gold just to have that pop of something. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Love this gold. We're actually going to come back to it here shortly to finish off the card towards the end. So there's that. And then I have 
this piece. So you're just seeing that pop of the gold, just a little, little hint of it. But we're going to go ahead and do some fun stuff and some layering. Now on top of this, we're going to put this fun piece right here. So you're only going to see some of the edges. So we don't need to go overboard on this. I'm going to get out my black ink this time. And we're going to do a mix between, and we're just going to stick with these two fronds because we're going to also add in this fun palm frond. So we're going to do the stamp palm and then also this piece. And we're going to kind of mix and match. So I'm going to come in here and I only want to do the tips of this one because I want it to really you get the idea of what it is. See, just like that. And I'm going to come in down here. Again, you're not going to see that much of this because a lot of it's getting covered up by this little piece of paper here. So you're just seeing some hints of it. So I really got to keep in mind where I'm going. I want to use my stamp for part of it now. So I'm going to come in and just keeping it all black. If you're kind of unsure about what color to use with your stamps, go with black. It's just easy. And I'm going to come right in here, just like that. Kind of take a look. So you're getting a little bit of, oh, some details, some stencil work. It's just a little bit of something. And then I think I have to come in right there with like a secondary so it's not so bright. Come in again with another one. Overlap them a little bit, add some kind of fun texture. I'm going to come in and do another stencil. Let's do a bigger one this time and really go light. I don't want to overpower this. Really go light on this one. Just nice and pounce, lightly pounce it. And I'm gonna that's gonna get covered up. So you can go dark with this, you can go light with it, come in with the stamp again. So now I've got it all covered. I'm not worried about that I didn't do the center or there's some kind of funny marks because this guy is going to be going like this. So it's just a background piece. That's it. I am going to ink this. And I'm going to go ahead and map this down right here like this. And I want to have it a pretty good severe angle. I might even have it kind of pop off a little bit. All right, this piece is going to go on here just like that. But the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to move my stamp off to the side, is we are going to attach this ribbon, and it's just going to go on the white. So we're going to first ink this. Everything is inked on this card. Get my tape, my handy-dandy tape. Now, the last card that I add a little bit of ribbon to, it got kind of funny, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of glue like it was pulling up. I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of glue right here just to give it that something to stick to. And I'm going to flip this over and go ahead and add my tape. Here's my ribbon is sticking. Ribbon and tape are my best friends, I swear. It's the best way to stick ribbon down, make it look good, make it look clean, give it a nice clean rounded edge. You know, it looks like it's completely on there nice and just it's perfect. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same paper, but we are gonna punch out some flowers. So I have this cute little flower punch, and this is a little bit of a thicker paper, but it should work just fine. We're gonna do, I'm gonna do two, but I probably am gonna to wanna to do three. I like the bigger flower, so I went ahead and punched one more out. Now I'm debating, I think I like that. I'm just gonna layer the flower on top of each other. Does it need a third layer? That looks kinda of cool. Nah, it's too much. I think two layers is good. We'll have a nice flat flower with two beautiful layers on it. And then we need to add something up here in the corner because it just looks very plain right now. I'm going to go back with the Wild About You one. I like that one. I think the other one's pretty cute. Sorry you're leafing, but I don't have many uses for the Sorry You're Leafing one. You know, Wild About You, I can use it for birthday. I could use it for all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to go ahead and stick my flowers together. And just like last time when I stuck my flowers together, I'm going to put a little dab of glue right there and stick it down. And then when I put the top layer on, I'm going to off-center it so the petals are not stuck together in the same direction. And I think it needs a little center. So we're just going to grab a, I think the gold's going to look funny. We'll do white. I think white would look good. And just a little sequin right here in the center here, just pop it in there. 
just a little. It's going to take a second to dry because it's it's a really thick or it's a it's a shiny board, so it's slick. So it's wanting to shift around all over the place. So that looks really pretty. And then while about you, we're just going to add it up in the corner and leave it very, because there's so much going on here. This white, this pure white is just making everything go, oh, it's kind of giving you that relief that you need. And don't over punch stamp this time. There, I did a good job. Yay. <laughs> And then I want to keep this nice and straight and center. And of course, I got a little smudgy fingerprint on there. And I want to, I, it's going to be hard to get in with the tape runner. So I'm going to go back to the bottom of the super tight glue and just add some glue. You just got to squeeze and rub it around and it comes out no problem. And then cap it. So it's kind of fun having the dual ended. There's the other cap. And I've used this for quite a few cards and I've still got quite a bit of glue in there. I mean, it still feels really, really heavy, which is nice. And then just stick this in the center, kind of smash it down. You're good to go. So this is another good way of doing, using your punches, all these beautiful, I mean, this beautiful gold. I got to recenter this flower. I got a little offset. There we go. Ta-da! Card done. All right, check it along the next card. Here we go. <laughs> okay, this time we are going to do some embossing because in our kits, we got this beautiful golden crown embossing powder. So gorgeous. I started off with a white sheet of paper and we're going to do some fun embossing. I'm going to get my tidy tray first. So I use this when I do all my embossing and it just makes life a whole lot easier. You'll see how it works here in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is all about florals, is I'm going to grab two things. One, I'm going to grab, we're going to do all this flower stuff. The big flower here and then also the, the other extra flower. Now, this paper, where'd it go, where'd it go? As you can see, just like with the last card, you're only seeing a smidgen of it. So we don't need to do a ton, but I want to do something on here. So we are going to put our piece down and then we can kind of stamp around it. There we go. So there's that. So it's kind of kind of gotten into the little corners. We can put our stencil down and go around it. Really get in there. You're just seeing bits of it. So I'm not too worried about how perfect this is. Put my stencil down here. Go there. Now, a lot of it got the gold on it here. So I'm just gonna come up with my stencil here. Go this way. So there's gonna be more areas of gold than anything else. And then come in here. So there's a lot of gold on here. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. Not at all. And you know, a little bit of embossing powder does go a long way. There's lots of embossing powder on this, more than you think. And it's gonna be, it's not gonna be perfect looking. And I'm cool with that. Okay, now I'm gonna come in and I gotta get my heat gun here in a second, which we'll get in a minute. And first is I'm just gonna start layering it on. We're gonna use the embossing powder twice on this card, kind of in two different ways. One is with the stencils, and then you get to see the other one here in a minute. I'm going to end up putting all this embossing powder back in here, but I really want to make sure that I get anywhere that I stuck that sticky embossing paper, this, it's on there. I even got it on some of the back of the card. It's okay. Let's see, it's just hints of it. Very background. You can kind of see where the, but you know, again, we're not going to see all of this. It looks kind of weird right now, but it'll work. All right, now I need to get my heat gun. That could not be easier. It's a little bit warm still, but it's not bad. Look how pretty that is. It goes from kind of going me to wow, real fast. It was stuck to the bottom of the tidy tray and I just want to see, does that look good? Yeah, see even the gaps I have on there, you can't even tell. Then we have this piece coming across here. Now I am going to add a layer of white in between there. I just haven't cut it yet, but I want to do the embossing since I have all that stuff out. First, I'm going to take my tidy tray. I'm going to open this up, this little piece right here. And I know I've got glitter in here and it's just the way it is. So I'm going to tap, 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 and all of that amazing stuff. Yeah, so there goes the glitter. <laughs> 
There's going to be a little bit of some shimmery glitter in with this, but that's okay. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and cover that up, and I'm going to pop my thing on here. This is the best little tray. It's so great. Okay, I have grabbed this already shimmery paper. This is green shimmery paper, and we are going to stamp with the two different flowers. And then we're going to emboss that too. So it's going to have like this double layer of embossing action going on. So I'm going to stamp, I think, here and here, and then come in. I'm going to make sure that this whole thing has got lots of good coverage of the stamp happening of the flowers. They're coming off the page right there. I can kind of see it. I can't take too long doing this. Come over here. I think I'm just going to do the one flower. It's going to dry too fast. I don't know the time, time length for this drying factor for this. I'm not going to tempt fate, but I want to get a good coverage on here. Whoops. So my paper goes flying. I think I got a little bit. All right, I can go in there. All right, I'm good there. Douse it, but good. As you can tell, all this goes right back in the tray. I mean, I coat this thing. I make sure there is nothing left. Cover this because I have dropped it before in the past. Pick this up, the little tappy method, apparently I have a sequin in here too. There is some glitter pieces that stuck on here and you know, it is what it is. Gorgeous, I love it. All right, so I decided to switch gears just because it was just too much. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Even when I added a layer of white, and I put this on here, it was like, whoa, that just, it just, between the embossing on the back, the embossing on the front, there was just so much happening. So I decided, well, you know, I got a lot of gold. This is the last little bit of this shiny gold paper that I happen to have and just go with it, make it work. So that's where we're going with it. So the first step is I am going to ink this in black because I'm going to add a black stamp and I don't want it to look completely like, where'd the black come from? So if I add this tiny layer of black right here, just a little small pop. It'll also separate the white from the white because there's two white layers next to each other. This gives that little bit of a separation. And then I'm going to add, now this is where I've been playing. I'm going to go ahead and layer these three together. Now this is what I was playing with. I know I want to add my stamp. I think what I'm doing is I'm leaning towards adding the top and adding a little tiny strip right down here at the bottom. If I can get one of the tiny ones, just need one. It's one little tiny gold strip that's going to go right along the bottom here, right there. And I completely did that crooked. I feel like this is like my golden goddess card. Okay, I have a little stamp that says for you. So I'm just going to test it here in the corner. Yes. And I'm going to line it up right along that line I just put. There it is, for you. And then go ahead and glue this part down. There it is. Super simple. I love that. Just very kind of a clean card. I did get a little couple of smudges on here, but not much I can do about that right now. And there it is. That part's done. Getting close to the end. Woohoo! Next card up. Okay, now I, from the last card, I didn't use this paper. So I kept kind of bumbling around with it and I found a fun way of using it, but then I cut it to try and do something else. Anyway, I'm going to show you when you cut a piece of paper and you realize that you crap didn't mean to, there's a way to fudge it. <laughs> That's what we're doing today. So I've taken a red card and I love the look. Oops, a little sticky on the back there. I love the look of the red with this particular paper because it just makes that pop. But I want to add, it's so red that I'm muting it with one of the back sides of this gorgeous paper. It's just really, really dark and it just makes everything kind of work really well. So let's go ahead and stick that down. So pop that on there. And since this one is already so dark, I'm not going to ink it. Now, this was my oopsie moment. So I went ahead and cut this because I was thinking I could do like a half card and then it didn't look right. And I was like, well, what if I just stick this on here? 
And I was like, oh, well, that looks really pretty. And then I was like, well, I got to cover that up. Well, then just put a piece of white paper. And all of a sudden it was like, ta-da, the heavens match. Everything is cool. But I got to fix it. Normally I would just layer the one on top of the other and not worry about trying to like fix the middle here. I don't have that luxury because I screwed up. So we're going to try and, and it's a little short. Now I could make this longer, but it just doesn't look right. So we're going to glue this down right here, glue this piece down right here, right there, just like that. And make sure everything looks like it's nice and lined up. Nope. It's a little crooked. Otherwise it's going to look silly. So the Zyron tape runner gives you a little room to kind of groove with it before it's fully stuck down. Let's double check this. Yes, and now that looks good. You wouldn't even know my boo-boo. <laughs> and the white on here gives you a nice kind of like a, a relief because everything is so dark. It gives you a place to focus and it pops with these white flowers. Now we are going to create our own flower. So I've taken the other paper here and this is like that muted gold and I punched out my large flower. I then took a little bit more of this paper that's kind of green, but it looks like it's got like gold flecks in it, like a shimmery gold, and I punched the starburst. And we're gonna layer those together. Just put one on top of the other, just like that. And stick it down, Boop. just like that. Now, you could leave your flower like that, but we were given these beautiful little leaves in the kit, and I was kind of playing with the idea of well, why can't I layer that? I mean, that looks super sweet just like that, but I wanted to add the leaves. So I'm going to add a little bit of this glue kind of going around the center. And then I'm going to fan my leaves out to make it look like it's a flower in here. So I'm going to have them all facing the same direction. So this little starbursty thing, you're just getting a hint of it in the background. Nothing huge, just a little something like, oh, well, what was that? Or what is that? So just kind of going around. Don't worry about the center of these, and I mislined them. This is why I like using a wet glue for this, because I can maneuver it around a little bit. There it is. And then I can stick this pop this last one in here. They're going to overlap just a tiny bit, because I'm doing them so close together. And then the center here, we are going to add a dark center because I have that dark color. So these really, really dark green, I'm going to try it first though before I glue it down for sure. This is really dark green. Yeah. And I think I'm going to put a tiny gold one in the middle just to finish this off. So a little dab of glue right there, a little blob, a little something. So don't be afraid to get your, when you get your kids, Instead of using the items exactly the way they're given, punch them out, change them up, turn them into flowers, you know, alter it up a little bit. A little dot of glue there. And this guy is so tiny. I'm going to use my little pick stick here because I don't want to screw that up. You know, change up your stuff just a tiny bit. It's okay. The golds are all different colors. I mean, it works. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of glue right here, just on this one side. And I'm going to leave this card sentimentless. I'm not going to stamp it. I've stamped on pretty much every other card that's in this kit. This time, I'm just going to leave it just like that. Now, here's the other bonus to not stamping on these cards. I can come back now at a later time and stamp happy birthday, happy anniversary. I can add a stamp to this for whatever I may want to use this card for. But if I stamp it now... I'm stuck with what I need to use it for. This is a very, what I would call, generic looking card. So it doesn't matter what I stamp there. It's going to work as long as it's a small little stamp. And I've got a whole bunch of those. So I'm going to leave it. And then I either can leave it blank from here on out. Or I can come back and add to it later. But that is our next card. And I love my little flower. It looks so cool. <laughs> All right. We're on our last card. <laughs> okay, I know I'm going to do all these big layers on this card, and there's going to be inking on this thing again. So I'm going to come in, and this time I'm actually going to ink the card. We're starting with the white base. I did pull a lot of extra white for this. Um, it just I felt like I needed more white, which we all have white card stock, so I didn't feel too guilty about pulling white cards from my stash. And again, I'm inking everything including the white sheet that we're going to be using here in a minute. 
Now, the actual layers is not hard, but the technique we're going to do is a little bit iffy. <laughs> we're going to do our best on us, put that way. Hopefully it'll turn out as beautiful as it looks in my mind <laughs> as it will be in the final product. So I'm just layering all these up. I love this beautiful butterfly and I just wanted to do a beautiful layer card, but I'm going to hold off on this because it's going to go right here, but we're not going to do it yet. First step we're going to have to do is we're going to draw in our stem. Just leave it very, and I didn't do straight. I kind of add a little curve to it and I did it higher up than where our flower is actually going to go, but you're not going to see that part. Okay. Now I am going to get some washi tape, just some from my stash. This is not from the kit. This is, you could use scotch tape. I'm just going to use this to put my stencil in place so it does not wiggle around on me. Hold everything down nice and firm because I don't want to screw up and halfway through this process, it wiggles. That would suck. Now we are going to stencil this on here. So I've made sure this is on here as clean as possible. And we are going to use our stuff here to make this into a beautiful glittery flower, which basically I'm going to end up using almost the entire thing in here. So come in and I'm using this spatula. And you're going to come in and you just get all the nooks and crannies. Try not to be too rough because you don't want to wiggle it around. This is why I put the tape down <laughs> to hold everything in place. All right, I think I got it. Wipe off whatever excess. I do need to wash this because this does have kind of a glue factor to it. So I need to make sure that I do wash this. Get my little lid back on. The cool thing about a little guy like this is that you're going to use it before it actually dries out. That's kind of fun. Okay. Now, very carefully, I'm going to peel off my tape. Not the best job, but it's not bad. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm just going to use this, my mat here, to try and clean up right where I want to see the separation of my petals. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a baby wipe. So I'm just going to come in. This is just my cleaning up section. And I'm just going to clean up to give myself that separation because those little tines in there that were separating the leaves didn't want to stay separated very well. That's working really well. I'm just coming in. You could use a thumbtack if you don't have this method. Just cleaning it up. All right, so I've kind of cleaned up. You can definitely see I'm going to hold up close for you guys. It definitely has some more separation between all the petals, the leaves, which I love. And you do need to make sure that you clean your stencil when you're done. I'm going to heat set this just to get it to dry a little bit faster before we do the next step. All right, so it was trying to bubble and burst, and I did not want to break the skin because I like the look of all this. But at this point, I couldn't come in and clean anything out. Now, I want to give this a center. And so I was debating and I want to test, I'm going to get a little sheet of paper out. Do I want to do just one big giant or do I want to do a series of little, that didn't even look good, just little dot, little dot. I think I'll try the little dots first and then if I don't like it, I go turn it into a big giant dot. <laughs> I can't take the big dot and turn it the other way, so we'll go with that. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, so because I've made those Nuvo drops really big, they're going to take a little bit of time to dry. And that's okay. It is what it is. Okay, last step to our card. And again, I don't want to flip this over and add tape to that. So instead, we're just going to, going to, gonna, I don't know what gunta means, add a little bit of glue to this. And then there's one more step we're going to do. We're going to stick this on here like that. Look how pretty that looks already. Careful not to touch anything. Now I'm also going to come in and because I heat set up the paper starting to warp a tiny bit. We're going to do the medium sized strips this time. And 
And that is the last card. So thanks so much for stopping by and checking out my kit. 10 cards using one kit, the Love and Lizzie kit. This is the May kit and it's absolutely beautiful with all kinds of fun tropical toucans and flowers. And you can make your own flowers, which is all kinds of fun. As always, all the information for the links for all these products are going to be down below for her store and also for other extra things that I may have used. And don't forget to subscribe and check out all my other social medias. And I have a blog. I have a YouTube channel, obviously. <laughs> I have an Instagram and all the links are going to be down below. Thanks so much for stopping by and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.